The final question is, do you support red flag gun laws? In a nutshell, for those of you that don't know what a red flag gun law is, I've put several videos out on this. A red flag gun law is a law where an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, an ex-wife, an ex-husband, a disgruntled neighbor, a disgruntled employee, a disgruntled coworker, your yard guy, somebody who owes you money, anybody who has a problem with you, a legal law-abiding gun owner who has no criminal record, zero criminal record, if they have a problem with you, they can contact the court system. They can say, Paul threatened me. Paul threatened to kill me. I think he's a danger to himself or a danger to others. And then a judge can give the permission for law enforcement to kick my door down. We're talking about a no-knock raid. They don't call me and say, I'm on the way. They kick my door down in the middle of the night, confiscate my guns, don't lock me up. They don't even lock me up. They think I'm enough of a threat to murder people, so they take my tools, but they don't do anything with me. They leave me in the, uh, the in, in, in general population, out in public. And then I have to prove to them that that person who lied on me is lying. At that point, I've got to go to them and say, I don't know who told you this stuff, but it's not true. So now I have to prove my innocence. You know what that means? That eliminates all due process. That is totally against the Constitution, and that's not how we should be doing any running any of our business or definitely not running any of our laws. So that's what a red flag gun law is. A red flag gun law is a complete and total infringement upon any law-abiding person, not just gun owner, any law-abiding person in the United States should always be afforded due process as the Constitution states. So that's what I'm talking about. Do you support red flag gun laws? Red flag gun laws are a bad thing. Jimmy Richard says, I feel that some of it is good, but not all of it because every person is different. So it should be handled on a case by case basis. Each case should be considered independently. And if a gun has to be removed from the home and person is determined not to be mental, be a mental or a threat to the community, then that person should receive their firearms back without any red tape. Let me be very clear to you, Mr. Richard, the red tape has already begun. Yeah, if you've already kicked my door in and you've already confiscated all my firearms, baby, the red tape is already in play. We haven't avoided any red tape. We're, we're Believe me, we are knee deep in red tape at this point. So it's all on me now. Now I have the cost of attorneys that I have to do or, or pay to get all of my guns back to prove my innocence because I ain't going up there. I can't do it myself. You're going to have to have legal representation. God knows the parish or the county, depending on where you live, has plenty of money to fund their people who are going to be the ones that are supporting. Yeah, we, we meant to take his guns. Do you honestly think that a judge or any court system is going, going to want to admit that they were wrong? It's going to be your responsibility to overwhelmingly prove that you are innocent because they are not going to want to say, yeah, uh, you're, you're probably right, Paul. You seem like a pretty nice guy. Let's give all your guns back. No, it's not going to be that easy. Nobody's going to want to say, yeah, we screwed up again. <laughs> Here's your guns back. Sorry, there's going to be costs involved. Mr. Richard goes on to say, however, if the person is deemed to have some sort of mental disorder or deemed to be a threat to society, then the situation needs to be looked at in much greater detail to decide whether or not it would be appropriate for that person to possess a firearm. There's laws in place for that already. We don't need another one. There are laws in place. If you are mentally incapable of functioning and you have been you have been legally deemed incapable of mentally functioning you cannot legally purchase a firearm that is an existing law for those of you that who are running for sheriff just letting you know that is an existing law okay uh let's see tony mancuso is next uh, Tony says, I believe we, he says, no, he does not support red flag gun laws. I believe we already have laws that cover such actions. Kind of like what I just explained. There are laws already in place and out, all of our laws, 100% of our laws should include due process. 100. You know why? Not because I want them to, because the constitution says that that is our right as law abiding Americans. Elizabeth Gray Carrier says, no, she does not support red flag gun laws. I don't think that will stop anyone from harming themselves if they want to. And what will stop someone from getting, from just getting angry with someone and making a call? Absolutely. You're 100% right. 
you're 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 saying exactly what I've said a hundred times over. Red flag gun laws are not going to protect anybody. They're not going to save anybody. They are not a proven means. They are a feel good law. They make people feel good. They also are a good way to get a lot of people in trouble and a good way to disarm a lot of people and make them susceptible to other crimes when people find out about it. So thank you, uh, absolutely, Elizabeth Gray Carey. That's a great answer um, because yes, it stops nothing. And if people want to do you or others harm, they're going to do it. They're going to find a way. They do. They already do. There's no one in history, in the history of the world, who has ever said, you took that gun away or you took that knife away or that rock or that bat or that screwdriver, that ice pick. There's no one who has ever said, you took that away, so I decided not to kill.